what's up guys today we're going to be watching a YouTube video so I'm going to play it right now Discretion is advised. Because YouTube audiences generally love to hate on stuff. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna predict that this video is gonna get a shitload of views because I'm being critical of another YouTuber. This is a good video. It's called Enough is Enough. It's about meme theory. My homie Emp Lemon's meme theory videos. But there's a little news from the meme verse. Uh, Emperor Lemon made a funny video about why behind the meme is, is not that good of a YouTube page. Emperor Lemon downward spiral. Downward spiral. Downward spiral. Do I have everybody's attention now? So a couple months ago I uploaded this video and so far it has, without a doubt, become the most interesting video on my channel because of how people reacted. Within two weeks this video simultaneously became my most liked and most hated video. I mean I've always had a divided audience on basically everything I've uploaded since 2014, but never to this extent. Back in the day everyone arguing in my comment sections were doing so within the realm of my own little bubble of content, but with this video I seem to have punched into a new level of YouTube. And out of this new audience, I gained a lot of respect and admiration from my peers, and I experienced the fastest subscriber growth rate in seven years of this channel. However, I also became vociferously hated by a large chunk of people. This video really stirred the pot for some people, I mean, a lot of people were pissed off. I received criticism about basically every aspect of the video, but one of the biggest talking points was, why Amp, why would you make a 30 plus minute video about behind the meme? What exactly was your goal here? The guy's just making videos about memes, he's not actually hurting anyone, they're not doing anything wrong. Why do you care about this stupid innocuous thing so much? Well let me tell you. I'm originally a YouTube pooper and I've been making YouTube poops for seven years now. Still do actually. Now depending on the person I tell that to, they are either impressed or confused. Why impressed? Because YouTube poops take a lot of creativity and patience, which causes most poopers to quit long before the time I've lasted. Why confused? Because so many people are under the impression that YouTube poops are still the same as they were back in 2009, and they wonder, how can someone make videos about Ouija Toast Pingus dinner for seven years? It's a misconception that really grinds my gears because it stems from a thought process of pure ignorance. It's a refusal to accept that YTPs are diverse, as well as a refusal to accept that YTPs change over time. You know, like every single other contemporary art movement? But nobody views YTPs as such. They just aren't respected because they have poop in the title. People will just watch Sky Had a Ouija and assume that all poops are like that. And even the few brave souls who venture beyond that still refuse to try anything new or slightly out of their comfort zone. They yearn for the older days of Durham Rocker or Orpheus and bemoan how all modern YTPs suck despite the fact that if you actually open your fucking eyes, poops nowadays are better than they have ever been and they beat the YTP is dead drum all while failing to realize that YouTube poops ability to consistently renew its approaches and methodologies is what makes it great and what prevents it from becoming yet another stale overblown fad. Remember montage parodies? They all stayed the same as the day they first got popular. They never ventured from the same memes and same style of humor. They stayed in all your favorite little cozy comfort zones of what you self-professed internet critics find humorous and guess what? No one makes montage parodies anymore, but people still make YouTube poops. I don't understand why they try, considering they're just gonna get ass blasted with derision, reminding them how they'll never be as good as some guy from 2011 who hasn't made a video in half a decade. 
or have their entire efforts dismissed by nonchalant viewer number 9000 who thinks it's just going to be 10 minutes of spaghetti toast dinner theater and they have to tolerate all of this while videos with a single fucking edit get 10,000 times more views and praise. Honestly, I don't know why the fuck I got popular making YouTube poops after 2009. Everywhere I look, I am reminded that I didn't get popular because of YouTube poop, but in spite of YouTube poop. And I have tried for years to spread the modicum of popularity I had with other poopers who really deserved it but didn't get as lucky as I did. And nobody fucking cared. I couldn't even get my audience, people who watch YouTube poops, to watch other people's YTPs. People are just so fucking set in their ways that they aren't willing to give these videos a chance. So I'd given up, which is why there wasn't a top YTPs list for 2016. But then along the way, I caught a tiny glimmer of hope. I saw that this guy called Behind the Me made a video explaining YouTube poops. This guy with a built-in audience of hundreds of thousands of eager fans is finally gonna set the record straight. Finally! After all these years, the misconceptions and ignorance surrounding YouTube poop is finally gonna get put to rest. And then I watched the video, and it wasn't good. It wasn't even okay. It was bad. It was fucking bad. Every misconception that people had about YouTube poops had not been refuted, but reinforced. Behind the Me had the power to do something really good here, to rejuvenate a fledgling art form. But he didn't do that, he did the opposite. He put forward a low effort, robotic, poorly researched farce of a video. Thanks for watching, and thanks for the ad revenue. Now on to the next meme. And that was my main point of the Behind the Meme video. His content fucking sucks. Behind the Meme makes bad content, yet everyone seems to be okay with it. My point with this video was not that normies shouldn't use memes, the only thing everyone seems to be talking about. My point was that Behind the Meme was doing a shitty job at explaining them, causing his generally normie audience to have a poor understanding and thus ruin the memes through misuse and haphazard spam. And so many people just rush to defend behind the meme. All he's doing is explaining the history of memes! Since when did just doing something become passable for you people? He's doing a bad job. Behind the memes content is bad. It's just bad. It's lazy, repetitive, uninspired crap that anyone could make. There's not much separating it from a text-to-speech bot reading off of Know Your Meme articles. me how many people see nothing wrong with this guy's content. Has YouTube really gotten so shitty that now it's okay to be mediocre? And that's when it hit me. It has. It fucking has. YouTube content in general has become so bad that people are willing to believe that behind the meme makes good videos. Cool. When I first discovered YouTube as a kid, I watched stuff like Charlie the Unicorn, Clay World, and The Laser Collection. What the fuck do kids today have to watch on YouTube? Spider-Man Elsa softcore pornography? Now granted, the stuff I watched didn't exactly have the cinematic merit of Citizen Kane, but they were original, creatively driven, artistic projects. They weren't something engineered to suck as much watch time out of young children as physically possible. Seriously though, what the fuck happened to content on this website? Now obviously, there's still good content. If content ain't good, I ain't watching it. And I still watch a lot of content these days. YouTube will always have inspired, creative, passionate individuals making content. It's just a matter of finding them. I'm able to find them through finely tuned subscriptions and recommendations based off of seven years of search history, but what about the people who are just starting to watch stuff on this website? I think it's fair to say that YouTube is populated primarily by young teens and children. 
It's hard to tell for sure because everyone just lies about their age anyway, but if I had to guess, I would estimate that the median age of people on this website is around 15 years old. That means that the majority of YouTube content consumers today probably weren't around to see content from before 2012. They don't remember the old days. Believe it or not, you guys, this website used to be fucking great. <laughs> By far the most compelling component to the allure of early YouTube was the idea that average, regular people could become popular from seemingly out of nowhere. Take Fred for example, YouTube's first real big star. He was just some guy making videos in his backyard. Then three years later he was starring in his own TV movie with John Cena. What we had here was this brand new platform where anyone with a webcam and Windows Movie Maker could broadcast themselves to potentially millions of people from around the world. The people that first got popular on YouTube were just amateur videographers, animators, and editors. They weren't A-list movie stars, they didn't have thousands of dollars worth of filmmaking equipment, and they didn't have decades of professional experience in producing media. They were just regular people that you could walk past on the street without noticing. Becoming popular on YouTube or having a video go viral was not just a far-fetched dream, but a tangible goal. Which brings me to my next point. In the days of classic YouTube, the only thing separating you from popularity was your own talent, creativity, intellect, and passion. If you were willing to sit down, buckle your fuckle, and put in the effort to make your content as entertaining as it could be, then you would get subscribers and views. Because generally on YouTube at this time, good content and talented people could rise to the top. Sure, it wouldn't be immediate, but there was a strong sense back then where if you put in the dedication to keep making good content, you would eventually be validated for it. If you worked hard enough and your videos were entertaining, you could make it to the top all by yourself. It was an environment in which real talent, effort, and quality was rewarded with success. It used to be really easy to discover new content on YouTube. You used to be able to see whenever one of your subscriptions liked a video or rated a video 5 stars depending on how old we're talking about. If you found just one YouTuber whose content you liked, this feature made it easy to branch out and find similar artists. You could then look out for what those YouTubers liked and so on and so on until you had a network of new people to watch. This system allowed small channels to gain much more traction early on since they would gain exposure every time a big YouTuber liked one of their videos. People were also more likely to search for new videos back then. In those days, YouTubers didn't upload as much and videos were shorter. This encouraged viewers to go out and search for new content if they wanted to stay entertained. Part of the actual entertainment of the site was trekking through chains of bizarre videos and poking your head in the weird part of YouTube. So not only did the mechanics of YouTube allow viewers to discover new videos, more videos were discovered because YouTube conditioned viewers to go out and explore new content. It is impossible to describe the greatness of old YouTube without highlighting the wealth of quality, independent animation on the website. YouTube provided a new generation of amateur animators, a platform on which millions of people could view their artwork. Animators like Oni, Harry Partridge, and Ego Raptor started off on sites like Newgrounds, however reached unprecedented heights through the wider appeal of YouTube. Animation on YouTube really served as the site's heart and soul for creatively driven artistic content. YouTube animations, as opposed to cartoons on television, were wild, radical, and unrestrained. While most of them weren't necessarily high quality from an animation perspective, they were under the full creative discretion of the animator. Oftentimes, the same individual would write, voice, and animate their projects leaving them complete creative control. This made YouTube animation unique as it allowed the full artistic intent of the creator to roam freely. One aspect that often gets overlooked about early YouTube is how content creators back then were much more honest and down to earth. YouTubers were much more straightforward back in the day because there wasn't as much of an incentive to run your channel like a business. Before 2010, YouTube as a whole didn't draw that much ad revenue, so the YouTube Partner Program was much more exclusive, only granted to the highest viewed channels. So for the vast majority of content producers, they just made content with the intention of making good, memorable videos. Going back 
to the independent YouTube animators, you could tell that the jokes and comedy in their videos reflected their actual senses of humor. YouTubers back then just kind of did stuff that they wanted to do. They were interested and invested in their own content, which made the content better overall. They weren't afraid of projecting their own opinions and personality into their work. This made YouTubers much more personal, connected, and empathetic than conventional celebrities because the videos and person behind the videos often operated on the same ideological engine. Creators didn't seek out audiences as much, rather audiences sought out YouTubers. This allowed YouTubers from the old days to present their content genuinely and honestly without fear of being tossed aside for speaking their minds. It's interesting to consider that early YouTube was an unprecedented new paradigm of entertainment. I say unprecedented because back in the day nobody really knew what could and couldn't get popular on YouTube. There wasn't a set in stone formula for how to maximize your clicks. Everyone just kinda had to do trial and error, throw whatever shit they could at the wall and see what stuck. This experimentation led to some of the most original and creative videos this site has ever seen. Now of course, it's also led to a lot of shitty, terrible, god-awful videos, but that was part of the fun. YouTube was a mixed bag, and it ultimately made browsing videos an inherently interesting experience. Videos back then were much more spontaneous and unexpected. Sure, most of them weren't good, but it kept you on your toes. Content was diverse, and there was a constant pressure for YouTubers to think outside the box and renew their techniques rather than becoming complacent and stale. Speaking from a personal perspective, the main reason I started using YouTube for the majority of my entertainment consumption was because it was simply better than television. I started watching YouTube videos in 2006, and I became a frequent visitor on YouTube by 2009. Ever since then, I've watched videos on YouTube for basically every single day, 365 days a year. I used to do the same thing with television. My favorite channels growing up were Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network, and it just so happened that around 2009, when I transitioned primarily to watching YouTube, both Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network were churning out some pretty mediocre shows. So I thought, why would I wait for these television networks to deliver me content I want to see when I can just go out and find it on YouTube? YouTube was just so much of an improvement over television back then. Instead of having to watch what was available, basic programming for general audiences, I could seek out whatever content that appealed to my specific entertainment tastes. And to make things better, the content on YouTube was made by regular people like me. And that depth of connection allowed me to enjoy the content to a special extent that was never possible through television or cinema. And those, ladies and gentlemen, were the seven reasons why YouTube used to be fucking great. Now I want you to take a good long look at those seven things while I carefully explain to you how, in less than a decade, YouTube has managed to completely fuck up every single one of them. Because YouTube has been on a downward spiral. This is the end. Downward spiral, downward spiral, downward spiral, downward spiral, downward spiral, downward spiral, downward spiral. So if you want to make it big on YouTube these days, well you better get used to those fucking rags. It's not happening. Remember when I said that becoming popular on YouTube was a tangible goal? Well buddy, if you want to get popular on YouTube these days from scratch, then you're probably better off auditioning for Hollywood or playing the lottery than trying to make it on the site in 2017. Because in order to compete with all the vapid shit the site pumps out on a daily basis, you better be prepared to bust your ass working around the clock for basically non-existent wages on videos that will probably be overshadowed by some guy more popular than you. Every idea that you could possibly think of has already been done a thousandfold by some guys more popular than you. And even if you manage to think of an idea or series that is completely new and original, some guy more popular than you will steal that idea and take all the glory. YouTube has stagnated into a power class system similar to that of Victorian England. Upward mobility is practically impossible. You either have to be a pre-established celebrity or suck a popular YouTuber's cock if you want any hope of working your way up the ranks. Of course, you could always sell out and attempt to ride some popular trend to the top. Enjoy your two-month spike of popularity until you get labeled a one-trick pony and fail to develop any personal impression on your audience. You are now free to ride the stale express into obscurity. 
But let's say you're more than just a regular Joe. You're exceptional at something. You have the talent and drive and vision to be better at your thing than almost anyone else in the world. I mean, surely if you're that talented, you can make it big on YouTube, right? Well, you better also be super talented at writing, video production, and editing, or else no one will even take you seriously. Of course, you could just hire somebody to do those things for you. Did I mention that YouTube pays basically nothing unless you're a massive channel? But say you have all of those things. You're talented, charismatic, a good writer, good on camera, and you're capable of editing a video into a polished final product. Congratulations! You finally unlocked the potential for people to watch you perform your talent. Whatever that is. Now just keep pouring your time and effort into producing content for, oh, a couple of years. By this time, some schmuck on Reddit or Tumblr will have noticed one of your videos and shared it in order to farm some free internet points off of your hard work. But hey, your stuff will finally be seen by a bunch of people. Congratulations, you finally achieved a modicum of success on YouTube. Now comes the best part, as you watch helplessly while the one single popular thing you made gets plundered by talentless reaction channels and compilation channels, all of whom get more views and subscribers than you could possibly ever hope to attain. And hey, some of them might even give you credit for your own work. Because these days, YouTube audiences are too stupid and lazy to care about who makes the content they watch. They just want to be doped up on a constant stream of bright, colorful content. No questions asked. I wish it wasn't so, but how else could your original videos get fewer views than a video of a guy recording himself watching your videos? It may not seem fair, but quit your crying. The reaction and compilation channels are just doing a better job at satisfying the algorithm. Oh yeah, did I mention the ALGORITHM? So remember when people on YouTube actually had to go out and explore the content they wanted to watch? Well, not anymore. Now you can just sit back and relax while the ALGORITHM delivers you all the content you should be watching. No user input required. Just click on your home page and YouTube will recommend you all the videos that they know you like watching. Oh, what's that? You want to watch your subscriptions? You know, the channels that you already like for sure, to the extent that you want to be notified of their future uploads? Well, fuck you! You don't know what you like, but the algorithm does! So we're setting your home page to default. Fuck subscriptions! It's also good to know that YouTube has removed the ability to see videos that your favorite YouTubers liked and shared, and they even removed the little drop-down tab that showed the video uploader's other videos. Now if you find a channel that you like, you have to click on their channel icon, and then click on the videos tab if you want to see their videos. It's like two extra clicks, but I'm sure the lazy, inattentive, modern-day YouTube audience will be happy to comply with those additional steps. Because the more steps separating you from the content you want to see, the merrier. But hey, at least YouTube added a default autoplay feature so that the algorithm can feed you a video in zero clicks. No need to explore new channels. Why go out and search for small up-and-coming channels when the algorithm can feed you videos from YouTubers who are already rich and successful? But YouTube really does care about its small channels having their videos discovered. Which is why they added the trending tab. Oh wait, the trending tab doesn't actually feature trending videos? Oh wait, the trending tab is composed of videos completely cherry-picked by YouTube? Well, are they at least helping out small YouTubers? Oh wait, the trending tab only features the same 100 or so popular YouTube channels as well as celebrities, pop stars, and TV shows that are already famous. Well, sorry, small channels. At least you still have the trusty method of graffitiing your channel name on the inside of bathroom stalls. Oh, you idiot! What the fuck? Man, isn't the algorithm great?
turns out the algorithm wasn't so great for pretty much every single independent animator on YouTube. Here's a little YouTube history lesson for you guys. The algorithm we have today wasn't the original one. YouTube's first algorithm recommended videos based on view count and video tags. You know those keywords you stick to a video when you upload it? Yeah, those actually used to mean something. Sure, the old algorithm wasn't perfect, but it generally allowed better videos to get more views. And by using tags to sort recommended videos, the old algorithm made it easier to chain videos together about similar topics. Nowadays, videos are sorted as broadly as the fucking category, which is why you still get recommended pyrocynical videos even though you've done nothing but watch TF2 videos for three days. Yeah, to no surprise, people abuse the fuck out of the system when they can, which is pretty ironic. Considering that's the reason YouTube changed the original algorithm to what we have now. Apparently people were just spamming their videos with a wide range of tags. And I think it also had something to do with some girls with boobs who made some reaction videos or something? But anyway, YouTube changed the algorithm so that video success would be based on watch time and not view count. Wow, it sure is nice to see that changing the algorithm got rid of clickbaity reaction videos. But a consequence of the algorithm change that actually affected people was the extinction of animation on YouTube. Animation is a long, time-consuming process that results in a high-quality product with high rewatchability. Prior to the algorithm change, YouTube animators relied on their videos receiving a high volume of views to offset the infrequency of their uploads. Since most animations are short, the algorithm change made it so that animations would only receive a fraction of the views that they did before. So through one simple change in a line of code, YouTube made animation completely unprofitable. But hey, at least we got Let's Plays! Now don't get me wrong, I think Game Grumps is an okay channel. For what they do, it's adequate content. But what a lot of people forget is that Eagoraptor made great animations. Was it really worth it to give up an excellent animation every few weeks in order to watch Aaron play video games for a half an hour every single day? Sure, it was amusing at first, but don't people get tired of this stuff? And they did, because I don't care how good your content is. Regular people aren't physically able to sit through half an hour of it every single goddamn day. There's just too much content to go around. If you're subscribed to like five Let's Play channels, that's like between two to four hours of content every single day, depending on who you sub to. Fuck that shit. Just give me the 15 minutes of great animation a week. By changing the algorithm, YouTube encouraged a system that favored quantity over quality. And this was the beginning of the downfall for this fucking website. Remember how I said that YouTube used to be populated with genuine personalities who cared about the quality of their content? Well, not anymore! Quality on YouTube in 2017? Quality doesn't matter anymore. Being genuine and honest doesn't matter anymore. The only thing that matters now on this website is the number of ads that you can cram into your viewers' brains. Now, I understand that YouTube is ultimately a business, and I have nothing wrong with people building their wealth by making YouTube videos. In fact, I encourage it. But when everyone starts strictly operating their YouTube channels like a business, there are core elements of this website that become lost. Nearly all videos these days just seem so detached and disingenuous. It seems like almost everyone has to dumb down their content in order to cater to more general audiences. YouTubers are just so fake these days, it's almost sickening. It's like living in a city populated entirely by lawyers, politicians, and car salesmen. Everywhere you go on this website, someone's trying to sell you something. If they're not trying to sell you razors, ebooks, or monthly crates, they're hell-bent on trying to sell you a subscription to their channel. Hey, can you subscribe? Make sure to subscribe, and like, and share, and subscribe, and subscribe! Please fucking subscribe! I swear to fucking Christ, if one more fucking YouTuber tells me to subscribe to them, I'm going to descend to a never-before-seen depth of my own personal downward mental spiral. Seriously, people, enough is enough. Enough is fucking enough. Do you really think that people don't know how to press the fucking subscribe button to the extent that you have to remind them at the end of every fucking video? And every YouTuber does this now. Why? If people like you, they'll subscribe. You don't have to remind them every single chance you get. 
Has there ever been a single instance where someone has been watching a video and they're like, gee, I really like this YouTuber, but if only there was an easier way to find out whenever they upload new videos. Just subscribe for us. Just subscribe for us. Make sure you subscribe. If you are not subscribed, guys, press that subscribe button. If you are new around here, subscribe. Oh yeah, I can subscribe. Thanks for reminding me. When has that sequence of events ever transpired in the history of this website? This site is like over a billion active users, and I can't fathom that mental conversation ever taking place. And fine, let's just imagine that you're a dumb enough fuck not to know the function of the subscribe button. Well, in that case, I wouldn't want you subscribed to me anyway, because you'd be too much of an adult to understand my content in the first place. Why the fuck do YouTubers have to constantly coax people to subscribe? We should be asking people to unsubscribe. That's what people actually need to be told to do. Lord knows I try, but no. YouTubers these days need to pander to, beg for, and cling on to every single last shred of a subscriber they can manage to scrounge up. And God forbid you even think of speaking your mind on anything. Everyone has to reduce their personalities to the equivalent of a stale piece of toast on top of a cardboard box. YouTube today isn't about telling people what you want them to hear. It's about telling them what they want you to say. YouTube audiences don't want to be challenged anymore. They just want to get doped up on some polished, sparkly, inoffensive content. Why else would content like BuzzFeed, WatchMojo, and Fine Bros be so successful? It just astounds me how the type of person who would go on Facebook and complain, oh my god, how can people watch the Kardashians? How can people listen to Katy Perry? How can people eat at McDonald's? How can people have such bad taste? And then they turn around and watch half an hour of BuzzFeed videos. It's the same fucking shit. Do you people not realize that? Congratulations. You played yourself. Can I ask something to you people out there who actually watch BuzzFeed or Fine Bros or Watch Mojo and enjoy the content? How does it feel? How does it feel knowing you're consuming videos fabricated by some corporate suit in a boardroom who specifically designs their content to appeal to saps like you? And how does it feel to realize that you're such a predictable simpleton that it works and you eat that shit up? So go ahead, keep watching the buzz feeds of YouTube, the faceless corporate entities who view you people as nothing more than walking dollar signs. Keep pouring views and watch time into them rather than supporting independent, individually operated channels who actually care about their audiences. Why do people nowadays strive to be like the next fucking BuzzFeed? Why aren't there more people trying to be like the next Vsauce or the next video game donkey? Oh wait, people try to do that only to get slaughtered in view count by the torrent of vapid and unstimulating dreck that this site turns out on a daily basis. God, it's absolutely disgusting the extent to which this website has lost its heart and soul. But wait, I'm not done yet. <laughs> Every popular video on modern YouTube has to be cloned from the same couple of identical cookie cutter templates. Here's how to open a popular YouTube channel in 2017. First you gotta pay some guy to divvy you up a shiny wishy wishy cool looking 3D intro in After Effects while you blast some obnoxious EDM bass drop. Now you get to choose your YouTube skill tree. You can either become a gaming channel, a commentary channel, or a list channel. Gaming channel's easy, you just record yourself playing a game for a couple of hours. They say it helps if you have charisma or dynamic speaking skills, but that's just a bunch of bullshit. All you gotta do is scream really loudly and curse every 2.5 seconds. Anything less frequent than that and the kitties won't be entertained. Just kidding, you could have your goldfish commentate your let's play and 90% of YouTube viewers will still watch it because they'd rather watch someone play a game than play one themselves. 
Now take that massive chunk of raw gaming footage you just recorded, chop it up into 10 minute intervals, slap on an intro and end screen to each part with minimal or non-existent editing, and congratulations! You have now produced enough content for a month's worth of daily uploads. So what if you want to do commentary videos? Well, just repeat the same process of making a gaming video and just record yourself talking over it with a completely unrelated topic for 10 minutes. It helps if you make a big giant stink over a topic that realistically doesn't matter because people really seem to care about that. And make sure to set the category of the video to gaming because you're totally gaming, right? Soon you'll be raking in those clicks. Alternatively, you could just talk over a movie or TV show and talk about how much you vociferously hate it. Man, isn't it amazing how skilled we as a society have become a tearing media to shreds? Gosh, I never knew how much every single movie, TV show, cartoon, video game, and song is the absolute scourge of humanity. But YouTube content? Ah, it's all good. Nothing to criticize here. Hey, as long as they're just doing their own thing, it must be great content. Just ignore it, bro! Meanwhile, let's go back to hating on this bad movie made by, like, one unknown guy on a shoestring budget who's probably shot himself by now. They've gotta be held accountable for their crimes against humanity. Priorities, guys! Anyway, what the fuck else is there to do on this website? Oh yeah, list videos. Just arbitrarily rank and arrange random shit in a list. Research and fact checking is optional. In fact, you probably shouldn't even attempt to do that stuff because it'll just slow you down from making a list video on every single possible permutation of ideas in existence. So just hastily cobble together whatever dumb shit you can, pump out 200 lists a year and hope one of them gets arbitrarily picked up by the algorithm. And make sure each video is 10 minutes. 10 minutes so that you can earn that extra ad revenue. Because that's really what this is all about. What, you think people make all these same videos over and over again because they're fun? Fuck no. YouTube stopped being about having fun a long time ago. The reason these same videos are fucking everywhere is because you people pour watch time into them regardless of whether or not you're entertained. You zombies validate this system and you make it so that these specific video templates are the only profitable means of video production because they are low effort, high volume videos. And what we've done here is constrain the profitability of YouTube videos to these parameters. But that's just the beginning. Not only must videos be low effort, mass produced, frequently uploaded, and over 10 minutes to succeed in 2017, they can't be too long either or people will lose interest. Because God forbid anyone in this generation has an attention span longer than that of a fucking goldfish. The number of fuckers complaining that my behind the meme video was too long made me realize this. Sure, the same pinheads who gladly watch some dude play Minecraft for 24 minutes are unable to sit through 30 minutes of a structured and detailed argument with consistent visual editing. But I guess that's my fault too, right? You fucking bitch! Oh yeah, that's another thing. YouTube viewers don't like to think, and YouTube viewers don't like to be challenged. Make sure your videos are as dumbed down and simplistic as possible. You should make your dialogue so basic that a third grader could understand it. Because let's face it, they probably make up a majority of your viewers anyway. So rather than encourage them to elevate themselves to a level worthy of intellectual discussion, it's just easier to shut off about half of your brain cells because GOD FORBID WE DON'T ACT INCLUSIVELY towards every slack-jawed idiot with an internet connection. We gotta sink to their level to make sure they're nice and comfy and don't have to use their brains. So yeah, don't make your content too advanced either. And also make sure you only talk about innocuous and vapid topics in all your videos. Because anything more extreme than that will be considered non-advertiser friendly. That's right, YouTube themselves will financially sandbag your video if you dare to entertain any audience above the age of 9. They saw a new generation of YouTubers like Filthy Frank and iDub succeeding by making edgy, raunchy content that appealed to an older, previously disenfranchised audience. Well, fuck them, right? They saw a new paradigm of journalism forming with the rise of independently operated news channels that could disseminate information free from the control of mainstream media. Well, fuck them too. Some disgraced Wall Street Journal guy called PewDiePie a Nazi. And now Coke and Pepsi will only run ads on toy reviews. So fuck literally every single small YouTuber who had a dream of succeeding on this website through original content. 
Hey, at least Coke, Pepsi, and YouTube kept their good PR. Thanks for taking one for the team, guys. Man, isn't economic censorship fun? So let's review, shall we? If you want to run a profitable channel on YouTube, your videos have to be limited to three different templates of 10 to 15 minute, low effort, high volume content that's dumbed down, neutered, and pandering towards the most generalized audience of simpletons. So if you're wondering why all the videos on modern YouTube kind of feel the same, this is why. Because YouTube has fabricated a system where only one type of video can succeed. Wait a minute, high volume, dumbed down content pandering to general audiences? Well that's just fucking television! And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the raw, bare bones, unadulterated truth. Through all these changes that YouTube has gone through in the past five years, YouTube has lost its heart, it's lost its soul, it's lost every aspect that made it a unique and distinct entertainment platform. And now, YouTube has become nothing more than television. Just television, but shittier. Because at least everything on TV has high production value, YouTube ain't got that, unless you count obnoxious 3D EDM intros. And television only has a couple hundred channels, so there's little overlap in content, and each TV channel is fairly distinct in its programming. YouTube has a million channels, and the majority of them are making the same exact videos. It's just amazing how much YouTube wants to be like television. They ripped off YouTube Gaming from Twitch. They ripped off YouTube Red from Netflix. They ripped off YouTube TV from fucking TV! I don't understand Google's business strategy here. Why not try to become distinct from your competitors rather than making shittier versions of their products? Need I remind them of Google Plus, their completely disastrous attempt to copy Facebook? Thanks for trying to force it down our throats for two years, by the way. Glad to see that it wasn't a complete waste of human resources. But I guess YouTube is hell-bent on being television now, even though it can't possibly hope to compete with cable or even Netflix in terms of quality, both TV and Netflix have programming made by professional writers and producers, the best in the world. YouTube is just a bunch of amateurs. Instead of highlighting the novelty, quirks, and creative freedom that come with independent amateur video makers like they used to do, YouTube has decided to bottleneck all of its individuality into a system which forces everyone to be the same and iron out all of their strongest traits. I'm sorry, but a bunch of amateur YouTubers making television-like content will never, ever compete with television. Not in a million years. Television is backed by multi-billion dollar media corporations. YouTube is backed by a couple of big soda companies trying to sell ads to kids. You people saw what happened this year. When a tiny, minuscule fucking controversy happened, a couple of companies pulled their ads, and this website became absolutely anemic. That shit doesn't happen with television. People who work in television get paid and paid consistently. As for YouTubers, it's becoming less and less of a reality every single day. Content creators have absolutely zero control over how things are run on this website, and we always get the short end of the stick. I've talked about all the shit that's wrong with YouTube so far, and I haven't even mentioned the site's complete failure to protect its creators from abusive copyright claims. I haven't even mentioned the multiple pointless and confusing changes to the site's layout over the years. I haven't even mentioned YouTube's complete lack of transparency, often making drastic changes with little to no community feedback, all while offering minuscule explanations about it all. I haven't mentioned those times when YouTube inexplicably broke the comment section, or when they inexplicably broke subscriber counts, or when they inexplicably started unsubscribing fans from their favorite channels, ALLEGEDLY. All of these topics have been covered already, in depth, by other people. But the overarching theme with all of these is that YouTube, despite being a giant multi-billion dollar social network, is run by incompetent boobs who make rash, impulsive decisions without any consultation or approval from its users. And every time YouTube fucks up, the content creators are always the ones to have to pick up the slack. Is it fair? No. Could things be any different? Also no. As far as YouTube is concerned, their distinct objective is to deliver ads to eyeballs. Everything else is completely irrelevant to them. They're certainly not going to piss off the advertisers, because they're the ones who pay the bills, and they're going to try to keep ad watchers pretty happy when they can. So that just leaves content creators to get fucked over and 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 over again. 
Don't like it? Well, too bad. What you gonna do? Go to Vimeo, please. If you actually want your stuff to be seen by more than a dozen people, it's YouTube or bust. And if you don't bend over and take your monthly YouTube sanctioned butt fuck, then they'll find someone else who will. People are lining up around the block to replace you and play by YouTube's rules. YouTube has no reason to care about content creators. And if you're just sitting back relaxing as a viewer, I've got news for you, buddy. YouTube doesn't care about you either. Because as soon as the content creators get fucked by YouTube's mistakes, it's the viewers who have to settle for shittier content. At least when content is shitty on television, they can it and replace it with something people actually want to watch. There's no getting rid of bad content on YouTube because the fucking system that's currently in place encourages it. And viewers don't know where to turn to find anything better. If this was TV, you just change the channel. But on YouTube, when you try to change channels, you find the same dull, repetitive, uninspired, mass-produced, pandering, profiteering, manipulative garbage. And it's everywhere. You can't escape from it. And the worst part is that there's absolutely nothing we can do about it. The majority of people on the site have become so inundated by the sewage stream of content that they don't even question it. They see channels like Behind the Meme, Watch Mojo, BuzzFeed, and Fine Bros, and they believe that this is the way YouTube content is supposed to be. Because they're not doing anything wrong, so how can they be bad? The state of YouTube is bad, okay? YouTube is unwell right now, and from what I can see, it's headed in a direction that looks to be very detrimental for content creators, viewers, and YouTube itself. Sure, the situation may not seem very dire right now, but if things stay the way they are for 10 or even 5 years, then I just don't know what will happen, but it won't be good. Things may already be starting to fall apart into an irredeemably bad situation. It is becoming more and more difficult for small channels to gain any sort of traction or growth based on hard work alone, while channels at the top of this website get fed views and watch time and ad revenue without having to actively improve or innovate their approaches. I feel like YouTube has developed a system that rewards quantity over quality, and YouTube videos in general are becoming too long while additionally lacking any informative substance. This is causing viewers to watch fewer videos and therefore fewer YouTubers. There's simply too much video content to go around and not enough time. Fewer people are willing to go out and search for new YouTubers because subscribing to the average Let's Play channel already provides them with 5 hours of video plus a podcast per week. Viewers are getting burnt out trying to watch everything and small YouTubers are getting burnt out trying to compete with bigger channels. What we have here is a system that's not built to last. YouTube has always been on the edge of control as a viable source of revenue, but never have times been more uncertain as right now and headed into the future. So to anyone out there listening to my words right now, consider this video a warning. I really care about this website and what it represents, or at least what it used to represent. And I am deeply concerned about the future of content creation on YouTube. And if you're like me, and you also care about this website, and you see the problems I see, then you're probably asking right now, what can I do to fix this? And the answer to that is absolutely nothing. Well, at least not by yourself. A useless buzzword hashtag slogan isn't going to fix this. A pointless change.org petition isn't going to fix this. What we have here is a problem that's become so deeply ingrained within the modern culture of YouTube that it's going to take a heavily concerted macro scale effort by advertisers, viewers, creators, and YouTube itself to restore the site to its former glory. And I just don't see it happening, because in all honesty, the vast majority of people don't care. The vast majority of people won't even care enough to watch this video a tenth of the way through, and it's going to take a cataclysmic event to happen before all you fucking zombies even turn your heads. But if you're not a zombie, and you're listening to me right now, then I have a message for you. My message to everyone listening to this right now is to stop tolerating mediocrity. Don't watch a YouTube video because it's there. Don't watch a YouTuber because they aren't doing anything wrong. Watch videos on this website to be amazed, to be inspired. Watch YouTubers because they are great. And if none of your current favorite channels can give that to you, then unsubscribe from them and don't come back until they're great again. In the meantime, take some fucking initiative and go out and search for greatness. There are amazing, awe-inspiring, unbelievable talents scattered all across this website. It's just a matter of finding them. 
It's all funny, you see, because... I started off this video talking about YouTube poops and how people have all but ignored them over the years, and it's ironic, because the thing that makes YouTube poops great, the completely carefree experience of making a video just to make something creative, original, and meaningful to yourself without having to worry about views or the algorithm or ad revenue, just making videos, I don't know, for fun because you feel like it? The thing that makes YouTube poop great is the same thing that made YouTube great back in the day. And just like YouTube poop, this idea of making videos for fun and not for business has been buried, overlooked, ignored, and nearly forgotten. And yet, in spite of all of that, in spite of YouTube and in spite of itself, YTP persists. And as far as I'm concerned, as long as YouTube poop is alive, then so is the potential for greatness on YouTube. So if you're just starting out making videos and everyone's telling you to do things one way, do the opposite. Do something completely off the wall. Do something that's never been done by anyone before. Don't sell out your unique beliefs, opinions, and style just to make a couple extra cents of ad revenue. Be the reason why people come to your channel. You get to decide what videos you make. Not the algorithm, not your fickle viewers, not giant corporate advertisers, not incompetent YouTube management. At the end of the day, you are the one who has the power to conduct your channel. Never forget that, and never let anyone or anything take that away from you. Because as far as we try to stray from it, the ultimate goal of making YouTube videos is to broadcast yourself. So go out and be the best. you in the next one.